Hey everyone, welcome back to Crypto Cash. Thank you so much for joining me here. I hope you're having a great day. Let's take another look here at Avalanche, see what's going on. 2780 for the current price point. Uh, we can saw we saw a nice little high here, a little pump up to about 29 and some change. That was awesome. But of course, that was Bitcoin kind of faking people out here with that little pump over the weekend. You never trust weekend pumps. Um, not to say it wasn't still lucrative. You probably, I hope you took some profit on some uh, on a trade there. But we actually have a short position open that's currently in profit, and we're going to see how much further down going to go and maybe consider adjusting our take profits because we average into a position i think we're in the 2830 range if i'm not mistaken let's just quickly double check here avex yeah 2835 is our average position so with that being said we're currently in profit we don't want to get greedy because the price action may not continue to pull back but uh, complete disclosure we have a short open with uh, bitcoin i feel like we're going to see a bit more of a correction so i don't think we should secure profits just yet but we are above the support range here and we saw a nice clean bounce off that little that little area so again it may be maybe best to, to consider that so let's see how strong this coin is uh, compared to bitcoin and just generally what the liquidation levels look like on the back end while we're loading this, I do ask you just hit the like button, comment below, perhaps if you get a chance. One of the other is great, really helps uh, grow the channel. More importantly, get this in front of people, uh, more people that deserve a fighting chance instead of getting destroyed by, you know, moon boys who typically tell you what you want to hear and they're filling their, their pockets. I prefer to fill your pockets and help you become a little bit more consistent. So AVAX on the left-hand side, seven days of liquidation. Not a whole heck of a lot. In this area in other words people aren't getting too crazy we don't have like massive concentrations but we can see 2670 basically the the area in which we see just below the local low okay so the low there on the 17th of october four days ago we could say that revisited it's really common for that to happen in fact that's exactly why you see liquidation sweeps occur like for example this local high here at 2850 that one got destroyed a lot of late shorts got got hammered because they took a shorted resistance you don't necessarily do that. I think that's bad practice. That's kind of the opposite of being a breakout trader. Um, and I, I don't really care to do that. I prefer to see what the resistance level does first and then respond. Again, it's not an exact science. I, you know, My strategy misses a lot of opportunities. So that there's that. But the key takeaway is that you know if you're missing more opportunities, but you're taking better opportunities, wouldn't that make sense? I don't know. It's just me personally. I don't like to beat my head against the wall. I prefer to just kind of watch others do it and learn from it. I don't know. It's kind of how it goes. Either way, no one's perfect. I am far from it. But if we take a look here at 31, sorry, $30.1, $30.10 essentially, that's right there, a heavy concentration. That is more uh, that area of, of resistance. So keep in mind, that's why double tops exist. The price tried to come up there. It's not a double top per se, but it is effectively trying to, to break that level. And the key takeaway here is that we were establishing higher highs and higher lows into that. But now we established a lower low, so that's not really a good sign. Basically, ten, those are usually signs of reversal in a lot of ways. It's not a guarantee or an exact science, but we can see that at this point here, uh, the delta has shifted. So this is actually good. Usually when you see the delta shift, that's a good time to consider a short, especially if you've broken a key level support. What I mean by that is we have more shorts than longs in the market now as of in the last five trading days. That's what this, this looks back five days. So the whole point of that is just letting us know that, hey, you know, we don't want to be a late short, but if there's confirming factors that are telling us we're probably going to continue lower, then that might be a good consideration. The only reason why I'm leaning more towards a short isn't because we have one open, is because we've already we've broken the the local low. Okay, we probably want to wait to see if that retest is a local high, and then we'll go from there. I'll show you on the charts what I mean by that. But open interest here is about twenty eight dollars and ten cents. So that's somewhat of that resistance range for us, probably somewhat of a point of control too. So let's go ahead and double check where we're at here. Let's go with the weekly first, work our way down. I like to touch on the weeklies uh, timeframes on Mondays just to kind of see where we're at. And if we do take a look here, we are in a pretty good position overall still with AVAX, okay? So there's not like a bearish situation by any stretch. We're over the 20 day SMA on the, on the weekly. That's a really important place to be. It's exactly why this range, we're seeing this range bound activity occur. I look at this here, oddly enough, $29 and let's just say round up, say $29 or round down. One, two, three, four, five weeks in a row, the price action has had difficulty crossing that level. We look at that and then we combine that with yes, last week's doji candle. What does a doji candle tell you when you're at the top of a run? It tells you the top's in and the price is going to pull back because in that entire week's worth of trading, we could not cross that threshold of $29 and close above. So that basically implies that the bulls do not have control of that side of the channel or that side of the price action. And the bears are like, no, you cannot pass, thou shall not pass $29. That's kind of what it's telling us. So again, this is not like an exact science, but 
Generally speaking, we can construe $29 as a significant resistance level for us until that is broken. Take a look here, of course, at the RSI. Same thing as well. We're seeing 50 in the RSI work as that exact resistance range. So once again, until we break above that level, we have no reason to consider a long to $30 or the uh, supposed moon, as some others would say, right? Again, careful who you trust. At this point, we trust the charts. That's really all it boils down to. But the money flow index is higher than the RSI. That's generally a good sign, though. You got to keep in mind, that's why there's sustainability in this level. So we could very well be seeing, and again, this is contrary to the, uh, you know, that resistance level, but also complementary. We can see that we have somewhat of a bullish rectangle forming, and generally speaking, they break to the upside. Okay, because again, we keep retesting that upper level or that upper range multiple times. Anyways, the weekly time frame still looks pretty good. It's not perfect or clean by any stretch, but it is it is what it is. All right, daily time frame. Let's see where we're at here. So generally speaking, when we look at the daily time frame, being above the the 200 is going to be nice. That's also kind of reaffirming that resistance at 29 dollars. Um, but we're above the smaller time frame moving averages. Those are generally good things to be above. So that's a positive sign nonetheless. When we look here at the RSI, we can see we're over 50 in the RSI, generally a good sign, but money flow index is starting to pull down. When the MFI is below the RSI, I usually don't like trading long into it. Okay, it's just kind of an unfavorable situation. However, we do take a look at a few other confirming factors. Here we got a uh, MACD divergence, stochastic is diverging as well. Uh, so a lot of like kind of shifts in momentum with today's bearish engulfing candle, it's also not a great sign. But once more, you got to recognize too that Bitcoin, um, you know, Bitcoin recovers. I think AVAX will too. So if Bitcoin does not continue to run to the 66k range or 65, maybe 64.5, it's golden pocket. Then we'll probably see AVAX stay the same here and continue higher. Because if you look here, we got this nice little kind of you know ascending type of trend. While it's not perfect, uh, trends never truly are. It's just something to kind of be mindful of and pay attention to. Okay, we're staying over the 20 day SMA as well. And until we break below that, I don't think we should um, you know, get too crazy or aggressive with your shorts. Uh, having said that, if you do take a short, tighter targets would probably be appropriate in this current situation because we don't know, you know, Bitcoin's been very, very unstable lately as far as um, its volatility and its ranges. And I don't really like trading a lot of, uh, you know, long ranges, so to speak. I mean, like taking any kind of short down uh, for a, a long period of time seems just less sensible. It's not necessarily a great swing trading market for the moment. Once we break free in either direction, it'll be a different story. But for right now, I have to play a lot of my shorts and my longs kind of close and tight. I'm shooting for two to five percent, uh, or sorry, two to four percent moves at a time. It's generally what I look for. Anyways, um, having said that, again, we can see this ascending trend here. Tentatively broken. Once again, this is an exact science, but we look at the four hour time frame. We're under the 20 and the 50 day SMA. This is occurring with um, you know, Solana, SUI, Bitcoin, a lot of stronger coins essentially uh, that are doing pretty well. They've broken below their, their support ranges. Uh, actually, correction, Solana wasn't one of those. That's actually a very strong coin. I don't recommend shorting Solana at all. I would recommend considering a long at 160, but I talked about that in my analysis earlier. Different story altogether. The whole point of this is that we're in between some moving averages right now. So we're starting to kind of compress. This is it one of those type of Bollinger Band breakouts that could occur soon? Generally speaking, when I see this, I usually like to avoid and or pick a side once the side's established. So we're not quite there yet, but we're getting there. Um, let's quickly double check here. We are under 50 on the RSI, generally construed as bearish. Money flow index is above the RSI though. Still a good sign. Stochastic's pulling back. MACD is officially diverged. There's more signs here that are bearish than bullish. Okay. The simple way to understand it is that, uh, you know, pending Bitcoin doesn't run towards 70K once more. I think we should be able to see AVAX continue to, to pull back. But AVAX has been moderately strong here in the recent past. So we can't, we can't uh, you know, second guess it or, you know, uh, not consider that at all, right? Let me go ahead and remove these macro uh, levels there just to pay attention here. The last thing I want to touch on here is each mobile cloud. And this is kind of confirming in a lot of ways that we are now uh, breaking bearish and we're on the wrong side of tracks. So Bitcoin is exuding the same exact behavior. I'm expecting Bitcoin to retrace to about 60, 67.9, 67.8, and to essentially reject off that, that, um, that local support range, or in this case, resistance range. And the reason why that's relevant to AVAX is because this 0.382, this $28 mark, and or the Ichimoku cloud, area, we should experience some resistance here. So the price could come up and do one of these, but the likelihood of it continuing lower is greater because of that. Another reason why I feel that way too is because our local low, which is kind of, it's not like a definitive line again, but that you know, 2780, we've talked about that level in the past, that should work as a new resistance. So wouldn't be surprised if we do something along these lines here where we become kind of range bound 
and continue lower, or perhaps even work ourselves into a bearish flag and then reject off the cloud here in the upper range there at about $28. So I would say a short at $28 seems sensible at this point. Once again, that's if it even happens. Bitcoin, um, I think it's got, I think it's doing, it's performing a bit of a fake pump there. Low volume and the, 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 the price is increasing. I never trust that. Um, so I, th I think that we're, we're due to see a further correction from Bitcoin and in turn, AVAX uh, as well. Again, I've been proven wrong many times. Honestly, this last weekend, um, I was expecting Bitcoin to pull back Friday, Saturday. It waited until Sunday night at midnight, Pacific Standard Time, to, to sell off after it got everybody to buy into late longs coming into a, uh, a really, really weird trading weekend. So again, manipulation, folks, it happens. But I think the key takeaway here is paying attention to liquidation levels and recognizing you know, where we're at here. At this point, we have a lot of liquidation on the upside, but that's a much further away than this local low here. We got somewhere in the range of maybe $1 billion between 27 and 26. So I, I think 27, 26 makes sense. So what I'll do is I'll update our, our, um, our targets on our AVAX short. Once again, we're in at like 28, 35. So we'll essentially kind of adjust that to this local areas. I would say um, upper 26 to low 27 makes sense for a good secure, uh, you know, good place to secure some profit. All right, folks, I'll post a playout chart here shortly. Thanks again so much for your time. Don't forget to hit the like button, comment below again, and obviously make sure you check out BitUnix too, folks. These guys are awesome. To those who've used my link to register in the past, this is for our community specifically. You have until the end of the month to take advantage of these uh, future bonuses. Really, you just deposit rewards. <laughs> you can do what you might want with the money afterwards, but you do have, I think, seven days to, uh, to use it. So just heads up, that is all available there. Thanks again, folks. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.